In this video, I'm going to talk about anchoring of cells in Excel. I'm going to use the example uh, where you're trying to do the computation to figure out if you work, and in this case, we're doing a 40-year career. If you work for 40 years, then how much would you need to invest each year to have a million dollars in your retirement account? So we asked the user to put in the amount invested at the beginning of the year and then also a rate of return. And again, these are simplifying assumptions where we're going to have uh, just a single investment at the beginning of the year and then a rate of return that is going to be the same for all of the years. So again, some, some very simplifying uh, assumptions, but it'll demonstrate this use of anchoring of, ce of cells in Excel really well. So in this case, we want, we're going to be investing the same amount every year. So what we want to do is drag this value down for all 40 years. Now you can see that I have this as equals C dollar sign one, but let, let me remove that for now. So it's equal C one. So it's taking this value and putting it here. And then if I just drag it down, you can see I'm getting a bunch of values that I really don't want. I want to get 2,400 in each one of these values. So in order to do that, I need to anchor it. Now, since I'm not going side to side in this, I can just leave the C as is. But what I want to do is to make sure that it's always using row one. So what I have to do is to anchor row one. And I do that by using the dollar sign. So I'll take this and now I drag it down. To year 40 and I get 2400 for all of the values. Now for my first computation I'm using an, an end of year balance and I basically just take this value and then multiply it times the interest rate and, and add those. Um, so for the next computation, it's a little bit more involved. I need to take my end of year balance plus the new amount that's invested. That's going to be basically what I'm starting with at the beginning of the year. And then I need to see what that balance earns from interest. So I can write my equation, say that it's equals C5 plus B6. Now what I'm going to do is then add C5 plus B6, but then also multiply that times my rate of return, which is C2. But if, again, if I just put in C2, then, and I drag it down, I'm not going to, it's not going to be using the correct value. So now I need to anchor it so that it continues to use row two. And now I can drag it down and it will be using all the proper values, but the value that we want to remain the same is the interest rate. So you can see that it updates all of these values appropriately, but the interest rate continues to be used. And you can see that we actually do fall a little bit short of our target of 1 million. And that was for 200 of us. So let's see if it happens at 3,600 which would be the equivalent of 300 a month. Getting better, but still a little bit short. And now we can do the equivalent of 400 a month. And again, you can play with the interest rate. I'm just going to leave it at 7%. And you can see that you do now get above 1 million. So obviously it can be helpful if you chart the data or plot the data. So we can take a look at what that would look like. You can see that this is growing. Uh, the balance is growing with each year until you get to year 40. And that's when it does get to be slightly over 1 million. Uh, one thing that this does show is the importance of, of time in investments. Because you can see here that to reach the first 200,000, it took roughly 20 years. But to reach... 200,000 at the end only takes four years to grow from a little bit over 800,000 to a little bit over 1 million takes roughly uh, four years. 
So going back to Excel, now this, um, since the main focus of this video is anchoring, um, we do want to uh, show what happens if you're going to anchor a value to the side. So let's say that I wanted to use this 7% and I want to use it here. So I would say equals C2. But again, as I pull it this way, so if I'm trying to anchor something to the side, I keep getting these zeros. So now what I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm anchoring the C value. Since I'm not changing the row that I'm using, I don't really need to anchor the row. All I do need to do is make sure that I'm anchoring the column. So in this case, we're going to anchor C. And now when we drag it across, we get the 7%. So what happens if you want to drag across and down? So again, we'll do equals C2. And then if I drag it across and down, you can see that I'm getting nothing but 0%. So in this case, what I need to do is to say I need to anchor both the column and the row because I'm dragging both to the side and down. So I anchor them both. And now when I drag across and I drag down, you can see that it's anchored. So in all cases, the formula never does change. So it's a tutorial on how to do anchoring in Excel. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Um, if so, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notification of when I have more of these videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.